Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire added some hallmark features of the franchise, such as double battles, special abilities, and Pokemon ribbons. One feature added in these games that has only seen sporadic returns is the secret base. Scattered around the Hoenn region you can find wall indents, trees, and bushes that can be converted into a secret base if you have the move Secret Power on one of your party Pokemon. The intention of these spaces in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald mainly lies in their Record Mix feature, which allows players to share their secret base with other players and even battle against each other's teams. But if you're going to have a cool secret base to show off to others, it seems weird to just have a big empty room. And that's where the topic of this video comes in, decorations. Decorations are exactly what they sound like. Throughout the game, the player can acquire over a hundred different items to populate their secret base, ranging from cute plush poke dolls to trophies of their battle prowess. This seems to be an evolution of the decorations that the player's mom could buy for the player's bedroom in gold, silver, and crystal, but this time the player has a bit more agency in growing their collection. If you watched my other Pokemon videos, you'll know that I can't resist collecting things in Pokemon, and so I set out to figure out what it would take to collect every secret base decoration in Generation 3. Let's begin. For the sake of narrative buildup, let's start with the easiest to acquire decorations and work our way to the rarest and most difficult. The easiest group of decorations to acquire are those that are simply given away to the player. This group consists of the Poké Doll given by Lynette when you visit her house, the Whalemar Doll from Zootopolis City, and the Doll of the Player's Chosen Starter in the Mauville Game Corner. And that's it. Only three of the over 100 decoration items are simply awarded for talking to an NPC. Speaking of Lynette, not even one category in and we've already hit our first roadblock. In Sapphire and Emerald versions, she gives the player a Lotad doll, but in Ruby she gives the player a C-Dot doll instead. So is the C-Dot doll simply unobtainable in Pokemon Emerald? Not quite, because of one NPC you may never have seen in your own copy of these games. The Traitor. The Traitor is instrumental for this challenge. If not for him, it would be impossible to obtain some decorations in Pokemon Emerald. So where do we meet this man? We can't. Not yet, anyway. The Traitor belongs to a group of NPCs that like to hang out in the Mauville Pokemon Center, collectively referred to as the Old Guys. These NPCs are tied to the game's record mixing feature, and they'll swap places when players mix records, allowing the next player to interact with them further. So why do we have this red-haired hipster instead of the green-haired trader? Well, it turns out it's tied to your trainer ID. If your trainer ID ends in a 4 or a 5, you get the trader. 80% of the time, he's just not here. I actually had to start a new save file on a different cartridge just to get this guy to show up, but once he's here, we can use him to move decorations via record mixing. The trader has an inventory of 4 decorations, and always spawns with a Duskull Doll, Tire, Ball Cushion, and Pretty Flowers. If the player wants one of his decorations, they can exchange it for any one decoration that they have, but only one trade can be made each time that he appears. The item the player gave him then becomes part of his available inventory, and the next time they mix records he will move to a different save file and bring the decoration that they traded to him with him. Finally, the other player can exchange for the item he was given, and this can be used to move the C-Dot doll to Pokemon Sapphire or Emerald. This is definitely not the last we'll see of the trader, but fortunately our next group of decorations definitely don't need his expertise. The next easiest category of decorations is also the largest, consisting of every decoration that is always on offer from the various decoration shops around the region. This includes the bricks, balloons, and musical mats sold in Slateport, the various flowers and plants sold on Route 104's Pretty Petal Flower Shop, the desks and chairs sold in Fortree City, and the dozens of items on offer in Lily Cove City's department store. The department store also makes up the bulk of the Poké Dolls section, almost every kind of cushion and poster, and all of the large mats. Finally, we have the two starter dolls that the player didn't choose, which are all available for 1,000 coins from the Mauville Game Corner. Since you can just buy coins, there's no need to gamble to obtain them. The third tier of difficulty is also one of the smaller ones, consisting of only four decorations that take some effort to obtain but are still reasonable. North of Slateport City is a building known as the Trick House. The Trick Master here builds puzzles that the player can solve, which mostly consist of mazes in which the player needs to find a password to the exit, and then they make their way to the back door which is always in the top right. The puzzles are fun and the trainers are easy, making this a nice light-hearted romp to obtain the red and blue tent which are either exclusive in Ruby and Sapphire respectively, 
but Emerald gets their pick of one or the other. With the trader's help, we can grab one of each quite easily, and then trade over the one we didn't pick to get them both in one save file. Another set of two decorations can be found east of Fall Arbor Town on Route 113. This route is covered in soot that falls from Mount Chimney, and the boss of the glass workshop on this route will give the player the soot sack, which they can then fill by walking through the sooty grass. If you leave the area and come back, all of the soot replenishes, and after gathering 6,000 soot and 8,000 soot respectively, we can have them converted into the pretty chair and pretty desk. It's a bit of a trek to get all of the soot required, but it's also the last of the easier to obtain decorations. Grab your Sneasler, because this difficulty curve just became a difficulty wall. Pokemon contests are an optional minigame, and we've talked about these before, haven't we? Go watch my Nut Peaberry video or Pokemon Ribbons video if you want to hear the minutia of this mode. You don't need to make me explain it a third time. The only thing of note here is that the Lily Cove Museum's curator wants paintings for his museum that capture the essence of Pokemon, and then tasks you with figuring out what that even means. Once you've reached the master rank of the Pokemon contest and win with very high scores, you'll get a painting for the museum in that category. Once you have all five paintings, you get a star for your trainer card, and returning to the curator will award you with a glass ornament. This one is honestly a lot harder than I'm making it sound, as you'll need a Pokemon with high condition in the contest's type to win, but with the right berries, anything is possible. Now you may have noticed I said ALWAYS on offer to describe the earlier buyable category of decorations, and that was very deliberate. As it turns out, not every decoration available at Lily Cove Department Store is something you can just walk in and buy off the shelf. After becoming the champion, you may notice fun little advertisements that pop up on the TV announcing timed events. There are four of these in total. The Energy Guru in Slateport Market, the Mauville Game Corner Service Day where games have increased odds and higher wagers, the Emerald Versions Blend Master event where he's coming out of training to blend Pokeblocks in Lily Cove City, and then the one we're concerned with, the Lily Cove Department Store Rooftop Sale. At this sale, they sell 14 decoration items, 12 of which you cannot get anywhere else. The biggest problem with this system is that the internet is completely clueless on how these events actually trigger. Even the most dedicated fan wikis just say, sometimes, or rarely spawns, and you can find countless game FAQ forum threads from the early 2000s or walkthroughs that just have nothing but playground rumors saying, Oh, if you spend a lot on vitamins, the guru will host a sale soon, or I heard if you have a lot of decorations, the rooftop sale will spawn. No longer. I am here to finally show you the true nature of these television ads. First of all, I have to credit the Kraken from the Pokemon Ribbons Discord. They pretty much solved this themselves after I asked around, so I'm just their messenger on Earth as it were. So here's how all this goes down. Whenever the player finishes a regular battle, the game rolls a number from 0 to 65,535. A regular battle is almost any trainer or wild Pokemon battle that doesn't have modified rules. No Link battles, no Battle Frontier battles, no Wally catching tutorial, just regular battles. Once the battle finishes and a random number is rolled, the game checks the roll and sees if it's lower then 655, which should happen around 1% of the time. If this 1% chance passes, the game picks one of the four events, and then tomorrow you will see an announcement that an event is spawning in a few days, meaning you won't know immediately after the battle if you've triggered one of these events. If the game picks one of the events that's already in the process of spawning, then it ignores the roll entirely. This effectively means you have a 1 in 400 chance of spawning a Lily Cove Department Store rooftop sale after any regular battle in Emerald, and you can't even know if you did it until the next day. There is one singular saving grace we have here. Since the Blend Master event is exclusive to Emerald, Ruby and Sapphire have a 1 in 300 chance instead. Also, since these events rely on the in-game clock, they will never spawn in a game with a dead battery, unless they are already spawned. This does also mean that if one of them has spawned, and the battery dies or is removed before their 24 hour period is up, they'll remain in effect essentially forever. With all that out of the way, we just have to battle hundreds of zigzagoons and then check the next day if we've actually spawned the sale. 
but after doing so, we can buy the mud ball, fence length, fence width, breakable door, solid board, sand ornament, stand, slide, TV, round TV, cute TV, and Rhydon doll in Pokemon Sapphire, and then ferry them along to Emerald via the trader. The Tyre and Whalmer doll are available elsewhere, as the Tyre is always in the trader's initial inventory when he spawns, and the Whalmer doll is given to the player in Sutopolis. I'd also like to take a moment to mention the solid board, which is only available from this 1 in 300 or 400 chance event, and is required in some secret base layouts to get the most out of the available floor space, as a quarter of all potential layouts have these gaps in the floor that can only be bridged using one of these boards. Luckily, in the remakes Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, someone at Game Freak must have looked at the system and thought, much like I did, that it was completely asinine, so the limited one-day events in the remakes are simply held on specific days of the week. As grueling as obtaining these decorations was, it's nothing compared to what is to come. From this point forward, we have crossed into some of the rarest decoration items in all of Generation 3. If you have legitimately obtained even a few of these items, I applaud your dedication. And you know exactly what we're in for. First up is a set of decorations that are either moderately difficult or nigh impossible, depending entirely on which version you earn them in. The Silver and Gold Shield are trophies awarded for a streak of 50 and a streak of 100 wins in a row, respectively, in the Hoenn Battle Tower. The Ruby and Sapphire Tower is primitive compared to the Emerald version, with an almost random AI and reduced Pokemon roster. It still takes a solid team to reach 100 wins even in Ruby and Sapphire, but it's definitely an easier task to win these in Pokemon Ruby, and then use the Trader than to attempt it in Emerald. But now that we're in the Battle Tower, we can't quite leave just yet. Up until now, every decoration has been available in Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire, but this is where Emerald truly takes center stage in this challenge, the Battle Frontier. Pokemon Emerald introduced a new currency that would become a staple of every game going forward, known as Battle Points, or BP. Unfortunately, as with most systems in their debut games, it was... unrefined? Pokemon Emerald has possibly the worst Battle Point payouts of any Pokemon game awarding just one singular point for your first set of seven battles and singles. Battle points can then be exchanged for all sorts of rewards though, including exclusive move tutors, useful held items and vitamins, or, most importantly for us, 15 exclusive secret base decorations. The problem with the stinginess in earning battle points though, is that the prices at the BP exchange are completely ludicrous. How much do you reasonably think it would cost to get these 15 decorations, given that you usually earn single-digit amounts of BP for a set of battles in each facility? 100 BP? 200? 1,536 battle points for a set of dolls. For an optional feature. Why? The biggest offenders here are the five large Pokédolls, which weigh in at a combined price of 1,024 battle points, with each of the fully evolved Kanto starter dolls costing 256 each. <sighs> I did this entire process in the Battle Tower, as you have most control over your battles in that facility compared to the others, and I tried each mode before settling on Link Multi-Battles of all things as the fastest for our purposes. Link Multi-Battles may be slower than other battle modes, as the game does have to sync up both games every turn, and battle animations are forced on. But not only do you have multiple Pokémon on the field to reduce the chance that a lucky Freeze or Paralysis doesn't completely destroy you, but the BP rewards are paid out to both cartridges, meaning you essentially earn 6, 8, 10, and so on for each set, because you start at 3 BP and cap out at 15 BP per set. That still means well over multiple hundreds of battles to earn all of the battle points you need, and this area is likely burned into my brain forever. Because the BP is being split by two save files, you will once again need the trader's help to consolidate your winnings into one save file. But there is, as difficult as it might be to believe, one more group of decorations we must collect. 
We have now collected every decoration item there is in the game, but we have not yet collected all of the decorations. This strange paradox is due to the existence of three Pokédolls, the rarest items in all of Pokémon Emerald. The Regirock doll, the Regiice doll, and the Registeel doll. These legendary titans do not exist in the base game of Pokémon Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald. They exist in real life. This is the Decoration Present, an e-reader card that was randomly awarded to 100,000 people who sent in proof of purchase of the six packs of the first series of Pokémon Battle E Ruby and Sapphire in Japan. The card has no limit on how many dolls it can send, but since Emerald uses different cards, it must first be sent to a Japanese Pokémon Ruby or Sapphire. So, by first scanning in the card in Japanese Sapphire, we are able to obtain the three dolls, we can then record mix to send the trader to Pokemon Sapphire and give him the dolls to send to Japanese Emerald. We then use the record mixing function between Japanese Emerald and English Emerald, and we can finally have all three of these Japanese e-reader dolls in an English Pokemon game. After getting these three Titan dolls in our game, we have now collected every secret base decoration in Pokemon Emerald. So where does that leave our grand total? Well, after collecting 9 desks, 9 chairs, 6 plants, 23 ornaments, 18 mats, 10 posters, 35 dolls, and 10 cushions, that gives us a grand total of 120 distinct decorations in Pokémon Emerald. Unfortunately, I'm probably the only one who's going to ever be able to access the secret base. But it is a strange comfort knowing that I have the rarest collection of decorations in Generation 3. Thanks for coming with me on another one of these weird collection obsessions, and thanks for watching.